everyone. Welcome to the Do The Thing podcast. This is your host, Stacey Lauren. Okay, guys, I have one of the Do The Thing experts that is a repeat visitor on the Do The Thing podcast and has even made an appearance on the Do The Thing dating experiment. And she has been a, I want to say, invaluable resource in not only the do the thing life, but also in my personal life. And I have really counted on her for so many things. And it's interesting because I asked her to come on the podcast so we could talk about accountability because that's something I've been exploring more now that I've been doing these challenges and I see people that really want to do the thing and that are sometimes still struggling doing it. And I want to be that person that is supportive and encouraging, but not to the point where the person has negative self-talk for not doing the things that they want. And I thought that she would be the perfect person to talk to about that. But then (laughs) here I am in the middle of planning the Start a Podcast Challenge, which is starting soon, April 17th. And I am planning the dares for that challenge. And I am going over what is the most important parts of someone starting a podcast. And then here I am remembering back to the things that really helped me with starting a podcast. And it's funny, you forget things when you go through them until you can go back and kind of track through them. And all of a sudden, I remembered that she was actually the person in the very beginning that helped me with my podcast because we were doing work together. Something I was really working on in my personal life was learning how to be a better listener for the people in my life and then also being better at just communicating in general and speaking up for my needs because I had a really hard time kind of asking for what I wanted and even sometimes even knowing what I wanted because I just didn't have that language in the past. And so she was helping me personally with that. And then I remember I had just started the podcast and I was like, hey, do you mind checking this out, listening to some of these episodes to see how my listening is here? And then what we realized was that the podcast was such a great tool for me to expand this practice in my regular life. And it's actually honestly one of the compliments I get the most from my guests when they come on is just how much they feel seen by me through the interviews. And so it just feels like I'm able to honor them in a way. And it's been a really important part of why I think I like the podcast so much is because of that moment that we have that connection and being able to have a space for that here. And so as I'm planning the start a podcast challenge, and we have this call set up today to talk about accountability, I messaged her and said, can we please add on (laughs) listening and being able to talk about how to listen and ask questions because I think this is going to be a great way to practice it. So anyway, I'm putting it all out there because we'll see what we get to talk about because we always have fun together. And I just thought I would kind of share all the different topics that I'm excited about covering with her. So here we go. I'm welcoming Kate Middleton back again. Hey, Kate. Hey, yay. I'm glad that we can cover all across the board of accountability and listening and yeah, being curious, asking questions and conversing in a way that gives you room to speak and to to listen deeply. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know, so Kate is a authentic relating facilitator, and then she's also a somatic therapist. So it's really just a a dynamic power horse together because she helps you kind of get into your, your deep core of who you are. And then also be able to, because you're in the deep core of who you are and what you know about yourself, that helps you get into a relationship better. And so I just thought you were perfect to be able to bring on as I'm encouraging people to be able to do a podcast, I feel like this is kind of a safe space to practice these skills because the person that you're talking to on the other end is really expecting to have this level of conversation with you. Yeah, it's true, actually. It is it is sort of the perfect practice ground. And also in the accountability, I think that the more you know yourself or the more you are able to connect deeply to yourself through your body, that easier it is to learn your own ways of encouraging yourself through something or getting yourself to do the thing. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm seeing where we're going to be able to do it all today. So (laughs) we'll give this a try. So I remember in the very beginning, I still felt 
very new. And I remember sending you over a few episodes of my podcast and and I was like, oh, can you help me? I want to really practice this muscle of listening and also asking good questions. And I'd love to kind of almost just have us back there or even just thinking of this future challenge for people that are starting a podcast and they're creating this space of connection. And maybe what are some good ways that they could practice that muscle of being able to have these conversations and be curious in a space of maybe not needing to know everything you're going to say and everything you're going to do in every step and just kind of finding the joy and the love of that curiosity. Yeah, absolutely. So I like to start with listening practices based in an almost a sort of a selfish perspective of what am I interested in about this person or what can I get to know about them? And the more interested you are, the more interesting someone becomes. I didn't come up with that, but I can't remember who did. (laughs) (laughs) So I think as a starting place, let's say it is in the podcast challenge and you have someone coming up that you're about to interview If you start to do your background research as you read their bio or their website, or maybe you've had a conversation with them, a little conversation with them before, then just let your curiosity run and get excited about what you might learn from them or start to tune into what it is you are genuinely interested in about them as a starting place. That's just a starting place. It's like, ooh, what do I get out of this? Which is kind of a funny shift because deep listening is really about what I think it's about is about holding space or supporting another so that they can open up more authentically and and really express more of themselves. But if you lead with your intrigue, it will open the door for them. So I would start there. And then it's really helpful to begin to notice what you start to censor or filter out, what you think is an appropriate question, what you think is maybe invading some boundary that they might have, and where your hesitations lie. And chances are those are respectful boundaries to have, but sometimes you might be holding back a little bit when the other person is really okay with opening up more. So I would also have a conversation, sort of setting a context for the conversation or for the interview to say, are there any no-go zones? Like, is there anything you really don't want to touch upon today? And then you could also let them know if there's anything I bring up that you don't want to talk about or don't want to go into, you can let me know and we can edit out that part of the conversation, if it's a podcast thing. If it's just a normal conversation, you can say, just let me know if and when you don't want to share about something and I'll respect that. Yeah. And it's funny. I actually do that with mine. And I, I, in the very beginning, I had made the mistake of not exploring more because I was uncomfortable because I didn't know what was okay to talk about. But what I realized, I don't want to say made the mistake, but that was what I learned because there was more that I wanted to know as I was listening back and I could I could tell I held back. And what I've realized as this podcast has gone on is people really do like having the space to be able to share those things because those experiences are what make us who we are. And I do say the thing about I'm comfortable editing. So if I go somewhere you don't want to go, let me know. But for those of you that aren't editing, I got an interview with Andre Scamboa. I don't know. I think you might have met him through the Find Your Voice Challenge. Was he on there? No, I think he was in the Start a Podcast Challenge, but he's one of the experts. And I interviewed with him on his podcast. And he said, if I go somewhere you don't want me to go, just say that's a story for another day. And I loved that idea because it made it really non-threatening because he doesn't do any editing on his podcast. And so anyway, I like that. And then... What I really love about this, it's almost like I'm I'm giving you a reason to practice listening by having a podcast. When you think about the things that you want to do, whether it's, let's say you want to start running, when you schedule the marathon or the half marathon or the 10K and you book the race, you're all of a sudden going to start running, right? And the same thing for, and this is going to accountability now, and we're going to mix it all together, I guess. But the same thing with starting a podcast, that's your half marathon marathon. 
And then the side effect is you're going to become a better listener and better question asker. Question asker? You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And in a podcast context, it's almost like you are listening on behalf of your listeners, too. So you're listening to what's being said and picking up on threads from that. And you're also listening in between what's being said or to what's not being said and perhaps bringing some of that into the conversation. You know what I'm also thinking is interesting, and I'm wondering, maybe we can talk about this here also, is one of the practices you did in the authentic relating training that I went to that was so cool and it was really eye-opening was just how different people are with the things that they want to talk about. And I don't know if you remember the practice specifically, but it was you're with the partner and then you said, ask a question. And then they got to put their hand up with one to five and Mm -hmm. whether or not they wanted to answer the question. And it's almost like the things you assume someone wants to talk about are half the times or not. And I just found that so fascinating. I was curious if you could just kind of talk a little bit about that practice and then ways that maybe they can even use that idea into whether it's podcast or real life. Yes, absolutely. So that's part of the curiosity game. And it's one of my favorites because it's really a practice of giving yourself permission to get curious and in a very safe container. So you have one person who's asking questions and one person who's answering. And in the first round of this game, the person asks questions and the person answering answers them. But then in the second round, the person asks the person asking questions, the questioner asks questions, and the person answering just rates them one to five based on how excited they are, how much they'd really like to respond to the question. And that gives you so much insight. And it also gives you a lot of permission to play with it because knowing that they don't have to answer the question usually gives most people a bit more courage to to at least put out the questions they're really interested in into the open. And then after that, you have more information to go on. So you could ask some of the questions that they ranked very highly, or you could go somewhere else. But you know what's maybe a one and what's boring to them and where you probably wouldn't go. And what would be a way, as we're talking, that I could actually almost show them this example when the podcast challenge starts? Is there a way that I could do that maybe through Zoom? Have you tried it that way before? Yeah, and, and I can I can send you the little steps to it, too, if you want to. OK, or you can come. OK, what I'm thinking, the reason why I think it might be cool, whether they're hearing or they see it real life, is the reason why I think it's important is because everyone cares about different things. And I think that's the other thing that the podcast gives you the ability to see because you're talking to so many people in such a limited amount of time that you're able to really understand people's perspectives and you're able to almost see things from just a different lens from all the different experiences that you're having. And I think that game is kind of like a starting point for that. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be really fun. I'd love to Yay. Jump <laughs> the group through it or something. Yeah, cool. And then what do you think is a way if they want to kind of play that curiosity game as they're starting their podcast? What do you think would be a way? And whether it's that specifically or just that idea that would be good for them to start? So I would actually start outside of the podcast even or both inside and outside. So you're practicing in your everyday life and just starting to pick up on things that maybe you haven't noticed before or things that, so it's like you're looking more intentionally and intently at the people who you are in conversation with or maybe standing in line with or passing on the street and noticing things that you might just ignore that are that have a little something you can tell there's a story behind them for example and you don't always have to actually ask them the question or bring your curiosity to that person but at least start letting your curiosity run for yourself for your own fun in a way and then when it does seem accessible or someone does seem approachable and you could ask a question and a in a kind, non-threatening way, then you could play around with bringing a question to another person. And I've said this 
before in different places in the do the thing challenges. The one way I like to start or lead into questions is saying that I'm curious about or I have a curiosity about this. So then it's up to them whether they answer or not or they share about it or not rather than a direct question, which if if it's someone you don't know very well or in sort of an unconventional setting, if you start with I'm curious about it's an invitation to that person for them to open up with you a bit more. Most of the time, people will jump on it because they love people noticing the things that maybe go unnoticed normally. And so when someone, and now we're going to the somatic side for a minute, but when someone's very in their head and they have a hard time seeing things like that because they're too in their head. And what I mean by in the head, it's like, what am I wearing? And does this look good? And what am I? And all these people seem blank and whatever all the things that come up for people that come up. And so it's hard for your brain to really open up because you have all these things in it. And so it's almost like you have to release that before you can even get curious. I was just wondering if you had thoughts on that as well. Mm, yeah. So I'm not sure you really need to release that. I think you could just maybe move it to the side a little bit. So I, I'm all about internal dialogue and talking to the parts of ourselves that maybe are shy or are concerned about whether you're fitting in or awkward or whatever's going on, whatever voices are sort of running the show. I like to acknowledge those acknowledge what's happening inside and have a little bit of internal dialogue to say, okay, I hear you. I'm with you. And right now, how about you just hang out beside me instead of inside of me? Or you can come along for the ride, but you're not running the show. And honestly, that often does wonders. It's a little, just a quick state shift and perspective yeah. shift that helps you realize, oh yeah, I have a choice here. I can actually show up how I want to in this moment. And then, so I would do that. Another approach is to start as more of an observer, as a witness. So you actually allow yourself to be a little bit on the outside, simply observing. That used to be my favorite place, just sort of hovering in the background and listening to what everyone else was talking about. And it took me a long time to develop the courage and confidence to actually enter into conversation and ask questions. I was really intimidated by uh, what m others might think of me and asking the, the questions. So you can allow yourself to sort of hang back and let that be your safe zone in the beginning, just long enough to start to notice and pick up on things. And then you have to keep moving your edge closer in. Because the end goal is actually to be part of, not to just hang out always on the sidelines. But that's a starting place to ease your way in. Yeah, I like that. You're really meeting people where they are and then you're not having them just forcibly jump in. Yeah, because what I've noticed when you do go from more force or push, yeah, forcing yourself to dive in head first is that you tend to be in your head and stay in your head. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty hard to actually drop in and connect from a deeper, more open, more curious place. Yeah. And now we're leading right into listening because the more thoughts you have going in your head <laughs> and the more you haven't said, hey, I see you, let's just be friends for a minute, then it's hard for you to be able to be in connection with someone else and hear what they're saying because you have your own narrative going on. Yeah. And this one might sound a little bit harsh, but I'm going to put it out there anyways. A little tool I use sometimes if I am in my head and worried about, I don't know, what I look like or what I'm wearing is I tell myself this isn't about me right now. It's not about me. It's it's about them. It's about who I'm here to get to know, to connect with. And that often is a bit of a, it's like, oof, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> It's funny. So when, and we'll go back to listening in a minute, I'll remember, but when I, I started first, and this start a podcast challenge is in a regular group, it's in a brand new group. So it's not just singles, it's going to be for everybody. So that's exciting too. 
sort of branch out the do the thing community and to help everyone. But in the singles community, when we were doing the dating challenge, a lot of them were saying, I don't know if you remember, but they were like, what do I say when I go up to someone? And then you were really good about helping them lean into that curiosity for that. And I feel like with the start a podcast challenge, the same thing is coming up where people are like, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to ask? And it's just so interesting how we are constantly programmed to have to say a certain thing and have to ask a certain thing instead of really being able to be in that moment with someone and then seeing what comes alive for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's unraveling a lot of what we've been raised on. You've got to do it right, right off the bat. You must be polite and approachable and all of these things that have us shaping our words and our conversations in ways that don't really facilitate deep and meaningful connection. So there's sort of an unlearning process that has to happen, but I think your challenges are your challenges are very good at that. <laughs> so I'd love to hear what you think about someone that is pretty much starting their podcast. They're interviewing their first person. They're very much in their head of what are they going to say. And just being able to be in that moment of connection and what would what advice would you give them? So one thing that I I like to consider when not just doing podcast interviews, because I don't have my own podcast, maybe one day, maybe I'll do your challenge. <laughs> but in in a lot of conversations and, and even coaching or therapeutic settings that you don't have to be in the lead, you're actually following. So rather than thinking that you have to lead with all of these really interesting, fun, opening questions, you get to follow their lead. What direction are they going in? How are they informing you of what they like to talk about through gesture, through tone of voice, through facial expression? And you follow that. You can simply say, if you don't have a question, you can simply say, can you say more? Or, oh, tell me more. Or, oh, I'd love to hear more about that. And that also gives you a little bit of time to figure out where you want to go next or what question you want to bring in next. But I really like to consider that you're following more than leading in that kind of a context. Yeah. And you're making me think I when I started the Do The Thing dating experiment and the new podcast, and I actually have one with you, I have little outtakes of me asking the guest questions. And I think you were one of them. Actually, I know you were one of them asking the guests, what questions do you think I should ask? And so that's kind of just another way. And I'm even thinking in real life, you could do that. What would be a question that you would like me to ask that would help you feel supported? And it's like, it's just such a non-threatening way to get to know someone and what they need. Or if let's say they're not feeling acknowledged or they're not feeling something, it's like, what, what would you like? And it's just being able to just Give yourself permission to be open in a way in support of this connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can you can also play with considering what you would love to be asked, knowing that it could be the complete opposite as someone else. But there might be something in that of what you might like to be asked, you might also like to ask. Mm -hmm. So you could also tune into hmm, what's fun for you to talk about, what's fun for you to learn, and where's the overlap there with this other person? I'm glad you said that because one of the things I'm really interested in helping people uncover is what really gets them excited because a lot of people are asking, oh, can you help me with monetization of the podcast? And I'm like, I don't even want to talk to you about monetization <laughs> until you get into what you actually want to talk about that makes you excited, not what they're excited or what you think people will pay money for. What's going to get you up out of bed that you cannot wait to talk to this person about? Like, I could not wait to talk to you about having this conversation because that's how interested I am in listening and questions and podcasts and personal and I'll talk about it in a minute, but the, also the combination of how our life assets, our lateral skills and being able to do all these things. And so it's just such a love of just curiosity for me because I really tapped into what gets me excited. And that's why I think in the beginning, you just want to explore that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's so important. 
I think it's really important also to know why you are doing it and that you're doing it for yourself and your very own reasons and let that inform every conversation that you have. It's almost like your mission, vision and values type of thing that you're bringing into your podcast. It's like, what are is the foundation that you want to build your podcast upon? What kind of quality or conversations do you want to be having? What do you want to be infusing into these conversations in terms of of qualities? Is it authenticity? Is it presence? Is it play? Is it, I don't know. <laughs> what else? There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then you draw upon that. Okay, so this is what I really want to point out for the listeners. Since Kate said that she doesn't have a podcast, it's funny because I know by this point, I know hundreds of people that have podcasts, right? And some that are literally supporting themselves on their podcasts. And they're all great. And everyone, I have great relationships with them. But it's funny that I, and I'm bringing different people on for different things, but I really deliberately brought you on for this because it doesn't matter that you don't have a podcast. It matters that you know the skill of listening, you know the skill of connecting, you know the skill of being able to understand how to discover yourself, and then the somatic therapy piece. There's something really powerful about that that I want the listeners to hear because it shows how everything you do in life ends up being a life asset for you. And then you can apply it in any area of your life. Yeah, and mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Something that just popped up as you were saying that was I would also really recommend for those who are creating a podcast to do a little inventory about their favorite podcasts, who they love to listen to and why. Is it for someone's voice? Is it for their jokes? Is it for the information? Is it for the people they have on? What do you love about it? And borrow some of those elements. Do not copy them, but borrow some of those or let those inform the direction you take on your own. Okay, I'd love to talk about listening now because listening is such a skill that really is not practiced by a lot of people. And I think the podcast is such a great vehicle to be able to practice listening. So I'd love to just give some advice around that. Yeah, okay. So number one with listening is to slow down. If you are going fast, if you are talking a mile a minute or you are supporting a fast-paced conversation, you are missing things. That's just what's happening. Because there is so much being expressed beyond the words that is worth picking up on. Our body language is so much more of our communication than our words, actually. And there's so much to pick up on there from the tone of voice, the volume, facial expression, gestures, if you're doing video. If not, then you can go with tone, volume, intonation, that kind of thing. But I would say first, slow down, set an intention to listen. I really believe in setting intention as a way to clear mental clutter and excessive thoughts that block, that get in the way of your ability to listen. So if you slow down and set an intention to go slow and to listen, that already sets you up. And then from there, I really encourage you to weave in pause and moments, spacious moments in your conversation that give you time to breathe and the other person time to breathe. It also gives you a little reset and allows you to take in what you've been listening. Because that's the thing about listening is you can think of listening as its own digestive tract. Things have to move through before you can take in the next wave of information. And if things are happening really, really quickly, you won't be able to digest what you've heard and then use that information to go elsewhere in the conversation. So bring in pause that and spaciousness. Get comfortable with moments of silence because a lot of listening is being in the in-between. So start to get comfortable hanging out there and not needing to fill things in. Most people will really appreciate you for that. So those are all kind of setting you up to listen. And then 
what are you listening for? That's my question. What are you listening for? You can listen through different lenses, different perceptual lenses, if we want to nerd out on it. But if we just want to (laughs) simplify, you can practice listening to simply what is being said, the words that are being said. And there's so much in here because someone's vocabulary says a lot about how they think, the way they form thoughts, and therefore the way they see the world. So you can listen to pick up on words. What kind of words do they use? Oh, that's an interesting word, one that I don't really use, but okay. You could check out what they actually mean by that. So they say something, maybe you don't quite get it. You could follow up on that. So you're listening to the words, what is being said. You can also listen more for the tone of their voice, the pacing, the so you listen when they they get animated or they get excited and their volume increases or their voice kind of lifts. Maybe they start talking a bit faster or they slow way down. You can listen for those changes and what's going on there. You can also listen for Well, this is, it. I consider it still listening, but it's observation too. Movement, gesture, what they're doing with their hands, where they're looking with their eyes, if they're shifting or not, or making faces or not. And from any of those pieces, you're not trying, or when I'm doing this, I'm not trying to get any one thing from it, but it informs my curiosity. If I notice a big hand gesture, or if I notice a, Ooh, the voice drops and they become quiet. Then I get really curious. What's that about? Let's go there. There's so much in that that it's so cool because I think you said it where so many people think they have to keep a conversation going that they're not able to take space during the conversation. And I think there's so much power in that. And I've seen you model this so beautifully. If I ask you a question and you guys could see it on past podcast episodes, but There's times that I'll ask Kate a question and she'll actually take 10 seconds sometimes to answer it because she's she's processing the question and wants to answer it thoughtfully. And I, I love that about you because you're showing it by example, how to actually really come in tune with what it is, because I think so many people can be reactive when they're and then now I'm going in real life, not so much the podcast, but it's so easy to get reactive and have to respond when someone says something to you and that's where defensiveness comes in and that's where all these things can come up. But when you're able to actually practice that slowing down, it changes everything for you when you're having conversations. Yeah, it's also nice to feel like you're not in a rush too inside of your conversations. And I think that allows for more to happen in the conversation and more connection to happen. Can you simplify this for someone that's new? Because I love all of this, but I'm just wondering if they're going to take one piece of this from the listening side, what would be something you would have them take? So to start off with, I would say take the slowing down and do your best to relax what you can, your jaw, your shoulders, your belly, because I think tension also inhibits deep listening. So slow down, relax to the best of your ability, and then start with just listening for the words that really stand out to you. And then that goes right into the next stage of listening, which is reflection. And sometimes it's really, really important to let someone know that you are with them, you're hearing them, you're in on the conversation with them. And to do that, you simply reflect back some of what you've heard. It's also a way to check in to see if you have heard them. And so if you're listening for what is being said to the words that they are saying, and there are some that really stand out for you, or there's, say, a part of the story that really strikes you, you reflect that back to them so that they know they are being heard. And then you're doing this. In both, like I said before, you're basically having that life asset and you have the skill now that you have an opportunity to practice without any risk. I think that's where I just realized is a big thing that I loved about it is there's no risk because (laughs) you can edit or you can say, oh, I messed up. And it's like you have this permission because someone's already a little nervous when they're coming on 
your podcast anyway. And so then you're practicing that there and then you're able to then kind of incorporate it into your life, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this goes along with what you were mentioning about helping people discover what they're really excited about. I think that in any situation where nerves can be a factor and in podcast setting, for sure, any conversation that they can come up, to remember to make it playful, make it fun for you. Otherwise, why are you doing it? If if there's no fun in it, it just sounds like a drag, right? And I'm sure anyone starting a podcast is doing it by choice. They're not really forced into it. Yeah, you're making me think I really have to make sure I'm incorporating something fun into it. Yeah. And then maybe the the figuring it out, the figuring out what are feel like good questions or not can be part of it. Maybe there's fun in figuring it out. Mm hmm. That's the figuring it out is something I've been exploring a lot lately, where a lot of people I realized as I'm talking to people is the reason why they don't move. And this isn't everyone, just you guys know I'm not completely generalizing, but the people that I've, some of the people that I've seen, it's because they think they have to know every step before they start. And so that's where the challenges help because we're showing you that you could be figuring out as you go and really kind of falling into that, which helps you sort of follow the things that you really care about. Absolutely. If we circle this back to accountability, we mentioned having that thing that we can set up as a an accountability device. I mentioned signing up for the half marathon or now mm-hmm. doing a podcast. Do you have any other suggestions for them to be able to follow through with the things that they say they want to do, even though they might have lack of time or lack of this or that or whatever comes up for people? Is there something they can do, but that's supportive for them and not where they're talking down to themselves? Yeah, well, I am all for accountability buddies. And I think too many, and it kind of dilutes the effect. So one or two, or maybe if you are really committed, you could have a little pod of like four people. But I think one accountability buddy is usually helpful to stay on top of each other. And what I find really helpful with that is having some conversations first and getting really clear on what actually motivates you? What helps you? How do you like to be encouraged when you're lacking motivation or when you need it? What doesn't help? And you hash these things out first so that you have someone that you're actively checking in with and it's not too many people so it doesn't get lost and you can't hide. That's the other thing with one accountability buddy. You can't hide from them very well. That's another thing I would say to bring into the conversation what happens when you are hiding or you're not showing up and you're avoiding and how can they support you to show back up again? But that's really my number one is having someone else in it with me. Okay, Kate, the time is here. What would be your number one piece of advice for the listeners on, I don't know what the question is, if it's, so here's a good example. Is it doing the thing? Is it listening? Is it starting their podcast? So whatever's coming alive for you, I'd love for you to give that advice. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So I think what's coming up for me right now is, is something around being your biggest ally in doing the thing. And so I would suggest or I recommend that you use these challenges to get closer to yourself because in doing that, you will be better able to support yourself to do the thing. And getting closer to yourself, think of how you've cultivated friendships in the past or close relationships. Usually there's care there, there's kindness, there's support. There's all these things that go into a healthy relationship. Well, turn that to yourself and use the challenge as an opportunity to be more kind and encouraging to yourself so that you can really do the thing. Thank you so much. This has been really wonderful. I always appreciate you coming on and us being able to have these conversations. Yeah, so fun. So fun to be here and to be in this with all of you. Please share where people can learn more about you and follow along. Sure. I am on Instagram at Kate Middleton Yoga, and my website is the same, katemiddletonyoga.com. 
And for the listeners, okay, guys, it's time to do the thing. Find what really lights you up and gets you excited. 